It's a few days later and wow, what a beautiful day. Although it's not as warm as the sunshine would uh, suggest, a little bit chilly, but a lovely day. As you can see, the um, planks, planks is probably the wrong word. Anyway, the wooden slats that form the top of this part of the bed are loose, they're separate to those ones. Come on camera, do your thing, there we go. Um, and I've put these bits of wood on so that you can, well, let me show you if I can do this one-handed. Flip them over. Sorry, this is a bit awkward. And the sun's not helping with the camera work. Anyway, the point is that the, the bits of wood line it up for when it slots back in. Oh, only I've made this one a bit too um, close. I've also got the loo in the way. Hang on. Right, I'll try and show you this way. You can see that there's the little wooden brace. And because there's two of them, it means that this can only just go back in and sit on top in exactly the right place with all the wooden slats stuck to it. I've done the same with this one over here. Come on, camera. There we go. So they can be removed when you want to get to them for storage and then go back and, and stay in the right place. And there they are, back in place. Meanwhile, down here is, well, the sink is going to be here. So this is underneath the sink and I'm going to have the fresh water and wastewater containers under there. Now, I've slightly messed this up. Uh, well, not really messed it up. It's just it, it's about a centimetre or two not quite big enough for both the containers which uh, want to sit side by side in there. I can squish them in, but they're in the way of the wires, and I don't really want the water containers as close to those wires as they're going to be. Um, so I'm pondering solutions to that. In the meantime, I took some of the cladding. I may have this the wrong way up. Uh, yes, that's the wrong way up. And I did the same thing with the this bit of cladding. I put these wooden braces on them, I suppose. And this is then going to be a door that goes in there. There we go, my socked foot will hold it in place with the water behind. And I'm either going to put that on magnetic catches or a hinge, a hinge on that end, and then it can swing open. Let us simulate hinging open. There we go to access the water. The trouble with the hinging is I think the hinge will have to be visible. I mean, granted, it's going to be visible over there in the corner, so it's not very visible. I fear if I use magnetic catches, they'd have to be super strong, because let's suggest, let's imagine I hit the brakes hard and the water tanks tried to come forward, because there won't be anything much securing them in place other than this door. Um, if it's only on magnets, I reckon they'd punch through the door. Not, th you know, they'd take the door with it. Um, so it might be better. I suppose I could have magnets and a catch. Anyway, it's one of those things I'm pondering at the moment, but in the meantime, there is that bit done. And as you can see, I've stuck this bit on there, and I've got this edging stuff, which just goes round the corner to hide the fact that you end up with a join of two bits of cladding. And that's an example of what it looks like. So the, the join there just hides the fact that the cladding goes round the corner. Now I've done a slightly silly thing in as much as I put a piece of that um, corner stuff round the other way, obviously down here, and glued it in place. And in doing so, have inadvertently glued that end unit to the bed unit. And up to this point, they have been uh, free units. They're, they've been movable so that I can mess about with them. And I'm going to need to move this one out to get to the back edge when I do some stuff with the hinges. Only I've just glued it to that one, so that's going to make things slightly awkward. There is space in the van, I think, to do it, but I've made life difficult for myself all by just gluing that in place. And the glue is sufficiently strong. I mean, it's really good stuff that if I simply try and rip that off, I'll end up ripping half the ply off. Um, so that's annoying. 
Let me show you the top of the bed, and you may well be wondering why I have little strips of wood apparently fastened to some of the battens. It's a very good question, and it's because the design of the bed didn't turn out as I vaguely had it in my head. I have never been very good at designing stuff on paper or whatever and then building it. It always seems to me that when you design it, um, it, when you then build it, it doesn't quite come out like the design because there are always things you didn't see when you were designing. So you might as well just have a go at building it, use the first build as the design, and then conceivably either do it again or work out a way of making it work. And this explains why I was a very bad computer programmer, because you're supposed to do all sorts of stages of formal design work, refining it through infinite number of design documents before you finally start coding. And what I used to like doing is just hack in with the code and try and make it work and then work out why it wasn't working. Uh, the same principle applies to my van building. I know there are people who do these fantastic models in SketchUp and total kudos to people who can do that. I got frustrated with SketchUp. I couldn't make it do what I wanted and I don't have the patience for all that. So I'd rather just have a go hack some stuff out, and then either then remake it with the knowledge of hindsight or try to make it work. And it's the try to make it work approach that I'm doing with the bed. Bear in mind that this is not finished. A lot of these planks are not screwed down and I'm trying to show you this one-handed. But the idea is not only that, actually I'll show you on this one, not only can this come out to make the bed wider, but also when you push it in, and I'll show you this on this one, it's going to be hinged so that it will all lift up for storage. So you've got um, you've got couch mode, you can pull it out for bed mode, and then you can lift it up for storage mode. And what's more, I've made it in two sections as well. So this one can pull out, giving you a little N-shaped seating area for when I have guests around. The point is, and the reason you've got these wooden strutty things, is that when you lift it up, they all need to lift together, but of course only the ones that are now falling apart will have the hinges on them, because if you need this to pull out, you couldn't screw them into a hinge. Um, but they, when you pull them out and push them in, they do need to slot back into place over the other one. It's all a bit complicated, and I'm probably not making much sense. There was supposed to be a mechanism for doing this underneath, which would have worked over that side, but wouldn't have worked over this side because of the boxing in I did around the wheel arch, because this would have got in the way of a thing underneath. So I had to come up with a solution on the top, and that is these very thin strips of ply. Now it doesn't matter, I think, because once you've got a mattress on this, and because it's over on the far edge, I will never notice. I'm not gonna be able to detect as I sleep or sit there that there is that tiny sliver of ply under there. Only the princess who could pee through 30 mattresses, with thanks to Terry Pratchett, would detect that bit of ply. Um, but I don't think I will, and it solves my problem. Once it's finished, I'll give you a proper demo of how it's gonna work. The final thing I've started on, which I'm going to do some more of today, is this, there's gonna be a set of storage units at the back which are going to house there's the little um, gas heater unit. It's currently on its side that's just for ease of sticking it there because it's got pipes coming out the bottom and there's the gas locker which is actually going to be over here sorry about the wobbly camera work on dear me shoddy shoddy camera work today anyway gas cylinder gas locker here and the pipe work will then go around the corner to the kitchen unit and the pipe work will also go down to the heater unit there that's the plan anyway let's talk briefly about kitchen worktops this is my worktop area you've got the two hobs there and the sink will be there as you can see I've sketched out the outline both of the hole you need to put in the worktop and also the line there is where the actual worktop comes to as you can see nearly all of this worktop is going to be a hole so if I buy a nice big chunk of walnut or oak or whatever you see in all these camper vans, that looks lovely. But then I chop out 
all of that to be the hole and the sink unit covers up that much as well. The only bit you're actually going to see as a bit of worktop is this tiny sliver here. It does not seem to me to be worth the fortune it will cost to buy a nice big slab of something nice, only to promptly chop, what, 70% of it out and make a hole? I'd be paying a lot of money to make a hole, and that seems silly to me. So I'm probably just going to buy a normal thick chunk of 12 mil ply cut the hole in it, drop the unit in it, and that will make that my worktop. And obviously a bit of ply isn't the best for a worktop, so I will stick something to that little oblong area, I don't know, a plastic cutting board or something that will then make that usable as a tiny bit of worktop. And you just won't... I mean, you can barely see the wood that's going to be around here because the sink will just be sitting in it. Meanwhile, under here, and on the other side as well, of course, I've got boxing in around the wheel arch, and that's going to just need some fairly thin ply cut to oblong shapes to go around here. So what I've done is made some cardboard templates. There's one cardboard template, and then there's another bit that's going to go around, there, and there's a bit for the end. And I'm just going to hold those up against a piece of ply, draw around them, and cut them out with the jigsaw. Yes, the jigsaw again. Plus, possibly for the longer straight edges, my lovely new circular saw.